Rivals Workshop Tournaments. You may know about the bigger ones like Genesis and Riptide. However, those ones are in person. The last time I checked, people bad. There's also the problem of traveling and cost. Not everyone can show up to San Jose with controller in hand just to get destroyed by a VTuber in Germa 985. So your next best bet is to look for those good old fashioned delay based netcode online workshop tournaments. Sadly, in terms of major ones, there aren't that many to come across. This is mainly because Ether Grinder McGee over here has left the delayed life and is never going back. Doesn't matter how cute your OC is, that life is behind them. Also, you have to remember that Rivals Workshop is just a side event to the actual Rivals of Ether game. And most of them are probably just gonna see it as How about this one? I call it bold and brash. More life! The game effing crashed, but when given the opportunity, Rivals Workshop can have some insane tournaments. And one such tournament is December's RCS 2023. First off, SK, what is Recess Cup Sucks 2023? First off, Bad Take. Second off, it's Rivals Championship Series 2023. This is an official event held by Rivals themselves where you can enter multiple tournaments to get DLC stuff, money stuff, maybe some friends stuff, and of course, rankings. I am better. All to culminate at a final event, which in Season 8's case, would be Genesis X. Which, Genesis never used Roman numerals until now, they're only doing it because the X looks cool. And I'll admit, it does. I haven't even seen any other movie, but I gotta see this one, the X just looks so cool! But RCS is also the name of an online tournament Rivals runs during the season sometimes. And the reason we're talking about this one is because this had a 50 character, 80 competitor, $840 plus prize pool donated by the community online workshop tournament. As of this video, this is probably one of the biggest workshop tournaments of all time. So, let's get into it. There were two streams for the event. First one was the official stream. This was where Rivals of Ether themselves were going to put it on their Twitch channel. Then there was an unofficial pre-show stream done by Robo Shy Guy, which was going to be streaming most of the matches you weren't going to be seeing at the mainstream. Because remember when I said that this was a side event? Yeah, the mainstream's only looking at top six, which isn't a lot of games. Now don't get it twisted. I am happy that we're seeing Workshop stuff on the official Twitch channel. But it is nice to have these other matches too. The stream was commentated by Robo Shy Guy and Coca Cup. Now, since this isn't the main stream, we're gonna breeze through this one, but I will go over all the matches. Lancon Azzy and Mr. Baggy vs. Flasher Wally. Pretty good match to start the pre show. Always a pleasure to see Wally. And Azzy's okay, I guess. Mm. Just kidding. We'll go over Azzy more in a bit. I really liked Spider Boy's NA versus Rice's Nate. You don't see Nate a lot in these tournaments, but when he's there, what can I say? The Wasp cooks. <laughs> and NA, as always, just such a weird but fun character. Honestly, you show this to a first time viewer, I don't think they can piece together what the hell's happening. JH Untitled Goose versus Zonix Kamaki. Two very polar opposite characters in terms of playstyle. When they clashed, it was really interesting to see. And also, don't worry, we're gonna talk about this character a lot more later. Sparks, Zephyr, and Rokesha versus Silent Fury's Deora. Again, another matchup where the characters are just polar opposites in terms of playstyle. So seeing them come together, clashing it out, pretty interesting. Zephyr also got a bit more screen time in the pre-show. Black Ace used them to go against MSB's Kiku. Also, must be pretty interesting experience commentating your own character set. It's like Harada commentating a Smash Kazuya match. Wow, that was an intense set. What did you think about that one, Harada? Shut up! Ambi using whoever the hell worked, going against Lancon, Azzy, and Mr. Baggy. First, the Nat was out, and they did what they could. But then the Reichenburn came out and oh my gosh, was Ambi behind the controller or freaking Gordon Ramsay because what the hell? 
But neither of them worked, so Ambi just resorted to using the character they made. Which, you might think is cheating, but honestly, it's not as effective as you might think. But it was nice to see all those characters get some spotlight. Very cool match. Night 6 Noel vs Jamillion Hoshimachi. Good match, not much to say here. Hope it happens in Chapter 3. Te and use the new Toma. Wait, Toma? You got Isekai in the Rivals? Dang. Godspeed, I guess. Versus Korn's Penny. Also, I'm seeing a trend with all these grapplers in this tournament pulling out some wacky stuff. Menaces, I tell you. And that's it for all of the pre-show matches. Gotta say, pretty solid stuff. But now let's get into the main course. That's steak. The main stream starts off with Slime Puffin and McDucky on commentary. Also, by the way, this is like the third video about a workshop tournament we've done, and McDucky's been mentioned. Everywhere I go, huh? Since we're talking about the main event here, we can go further in depth on some of these characters and the players using them. First up is Lancarn, a household name in the workshop competitive scene, been around for as long as I can remember. Also, they play Nickelodeon and All-Star Brawl now, pretty cool. Versus Zarnix, who is not just a workshop player, but an EU Rivals base cast player, and a pretty good one at that. First character we're talking about is Azzy and Mr. Baggy by Spider Boy. Yes, the same Spider Boy. This character is all about throwing objects at you, so much so that you probably need to buy another controller after you're done fighting them. Or a keyboard. Hope you're not on laptop. But the bag has another purpose. It can re-grab items and use them again as a surprise tool that will help you later. The other character is a newer character, Kumaki by Inorotaku. Yes, the same Inorotaku who is the TO of the same tournament. The main thing you need to know about Kumaki is the plus and minus state gimmick. Or as I like to call it, please play the video game. It's quite simple really. When you move towards your opponent and attack them, you gain plus state. And this is good, because this boosts your stats up, and you can start winning! Good job! Uh-oh, let's say you're a player that doesn't like playing the video game. You're moving away from your opponent, you're not engaging. Negative, Negative penalty. penalty. That's bad. That will give you the minus state, which, as you can guess, will reduce your stats. So, TLDR, win. Fun fact, Kumaki and Azzy and Mr. Baggy are all from the same universe called Reaper's Warning. Warning me about what, my financial investments? Alright Reapers, keep your eye on this one. Make sure his bank account does not hit the red. Sir, he's literally on the Pokemon Twitch channel. I think we need to sound the alarm. Hey yo! Hey yo, what the mouse doing? No, no! Bank account's gonna be doing! The bank account's gonna be thousands of dollars! I should've listened to those Reapers, man. Oh no! Wow, you're a dumbass. But let's get into the actual match. And it's not looking good for Zarnix at all. But that's okay. Because when life gives you lemons, you turn into Azzy and Mr. Baggy. So we get a ditto. And Zarnix didn't do too bad with Azzy and Mr. Baggy. In fact, this is the character they stay with the entire tournament. They still lost, but, but that's okay because, I mean, it could have been worse. You could have gotten for it. What can I say about Bendy? Imagine the oddballs of a fighting game roster, the weirdos, the out of left fielders. Yeah, that's Bendy's bread and butter. Going against Dakota, another mainstay in the workshop community. In fact, flashback to that Genesis tournament, he was the runner-up. Which begs the question, how well would he do in this one? Crewmate is the classic Circle Guy character from the hit game... Come on, you know what it is. Crewmate has many tools at his disposal, from the vents, to the imposter skills, to the emergency meeting button which can pull in other players, including himself, into the area. And Torga DE by Shrug, a character 100% reliant on the bomb they create. And they have tools to work off that bomb, like the Whirlwind and the Shield. First match starts and Dakota is able to finish it with a clean bomb snipe. Next game, however, Bendy steps it up and is able to take the win off Dakota. And I believe, my dear viewers, that that game shook up Dakota. Why do I say that? Because Dakota switched into another character, Yurdrick's Suitcase. Suitcase is a love letter character to rouse the Ether, referencing things like the community events to just the game itself. And they have a mechanic where when they level up with experience, 
they can gain new moves and stats. So, was this the character choice that changed the game up for Dakota? Well, don't get too attached to the suitcase, let me tell you. Dang, that shakeup was so bad, Dakota picked the wrong character. Back to Torga we go! And this game was pretty close. This might have been a different outcome if a couple of wrong moves were made. But Dakota strapped in and was able to get to Game 5. And an intense Game 5 it was. But at the end of the day, Dakota was able to snag the win and send Bendy to losers. But hey, losers is in the end of the story. Let's see what happens later in the tournament. Lancon had gotten pretty far in this tournament, but when the Dakota match was up next, oh boy, Lancon got smoked. Dakota 3 0 to Lancon to move on. But hey, don't sweat it, Lancon. It could have been worse. You could have gotten 5 0. And with this win, Dakota sits proud in grand finals. But hey, wild losers bracket ones will help me get out of bed in the morning. So let's jump right into. Remember when I talked about that Silent vs. Spark match on the pre-show? Well, Silent actually won that match, and looking at Spark's track record, yeah, I think that speaks for itself. Silent is using Deora, the open gunner character. This character is a grappler that is able to put a stats effect on you to do even more insanely powerful moves. But the thing about grapplers is that they have to get in close to do any effective damage, and Bendy's spacing and thinking are not like the average player. I mean, they can't be if you want wins on people like Dakota. After two games, Silent realizes this. So the switch is made to Iro DE. Iro DE is also from Open Gunner. This furry, massive individual is capable of putting an electric state on the opponent. And when the chain whip hits, a buff state is given to Iro. Yeah, 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 that's all very scary. But what can it do against Bit? Oh. I see. Spider Boy, as I mentioned before, is not just a workshop player, but a workshop dev. They've made characters such as Chimera, Valiant Death, Jirachi, and the character they had to beat up. Why did you make me do this? Nitori Kawashiro by Oligarch Chomp is from the Toho series, specifically the 10th one. Yeah, I forget how many games this series has sometimes. At the time of this recording, it's probably past Final Fantasy, plus the spin-offs it has, plus the fan games it has. Th this series is everywhere. Now, if you have eyes and not daredeviling your way through life, you can obviously see she has a comically large bag behind her. This bag is her main source of power. She can pull multiple things out of it, including a giant grabbing hand. But that's not her main gimmick, no no no. Her main gimmick is the geyser. It's a recovery move. She can ride on it, the opponent can ride on it, but more importantly, items can ride on it. So, it's a dangerous tool if used correctly. Now, I haven't been really mentioning the commentators in this video, but they bring up something very interesting about Zonix. This, like, this top 6, we have seen three different free stocks in game once. The worst part is that Zonix has been a part of two. <laughs> See, kids? Even if you get styled on, clipped, ratioed, made merch of your L, you can always come back. That being said though, Zarnix isn't doing too hot in this game, so one more loss and oh. Well, there's always the EU tournament! First match was insanely back and forth, and ends in an insane fashion. But the second one, not so much. That down air is out for blood, and it once again takes another game. At this moment, players will look at the score, and the hope starts to fade. The reverse 3-0 is always possible, but how likely is it to really happen? I mean, you gotta think about it. Your opponent has to drop the ball. Three times! Well, Spider Boy proves that the fire is not out just yet and gets the win on Bendy. And the next game, again, another win on Bendy. Spider-Boy ain't done just yet. Game 5 is upon us. Winner faces Lancon, live and let die. Everything was insanely back and forth, anyone's game. 
until Bendy caught Spider slipping. In fighting games, in life I guess, it only takes a few wrong guesses to change the tide of battle. And this one is no exception. Bendy takes the win and moves on. First game starts and Bendy sees the mission. Get to the coda, win the tournament. All you have to do. With that knowledge, takes the first match. But remember, Lancon faced Dakota earlier in the tournament as well and got 3-0'd. Both players want the run back. And with that knowledge, Lancon takes the second game. Game 3 starts and it's pretty back and forth. But remember what I told you about Azzy's items. They aren't just for show, they can be your demise. So what happens when a tool used for mostly measuring stuff and seeing how long something is, is the thing that gets the win. Game 4 starts and Bendy's not looking so good. Only needs one more loss to be out of this tournament. Until... Oh, huge dash attack preventing that strong. Oh! Yeah... You hate to see it, but that one SD is just enough for Bendy to get the win in this match. Game 5 starts, and Lancon is done. Two stocks taken right off the bat. And with a big strong to end it, Lancon moves on and gets Bendy out of the tournament. While the crewmate may be pretty goofy, it did some fine work in this tournament. And I believe there's a universe very similar to ours, where a different outcome unfolded. Grand Finals. First game starts, and Dakota already messes up! Lancon has an opportunity- Realizing how a lot of percents get- FUCK SPIKE! What the fuck? Did you know the book can do that, chat? Because honestly, I forgot. Maybe Fahrenheit 451 was on to something. Dakota though, does not let this stop the momentum. Takes game two. And Dakota also takes game three in a very amazing fashion. Now, if you're in the winner's side of Grand Finals, you do not want to mess up here. You only need one more win to win the tournament. All you need to do is finish the story. So, let's see what Dakota- Dang, fumbling harder than Golem. Okay, okay, okay. So Lancon took game four. We still have game five. He could still lose here if Dakota just doesn't mess up. I. Oh no! Bro wanted to fumble harder than Golem and Rise of Kong. Lancon's able to push through, pop off, and make it through game five for the bracket reset. All right. Truest final starts, we're in game one. What the hell is Dakota doing? Lancon is able to get the 3 0. Alright, Dakota realized he was tripping all over himself, making Brawl look like melee. So, he straps in. He takes game two. Game three, again, Dakota is on top. But Lancon's not done yet. He's calculated the possibilities. And he sees what he can do, plays really smart, and is able to take game 4. This is it. No more Killer Queen bites the dust, no more going back in time. We are finishing it. This is the end of the tournament. Game 5. Game 5 starts and Dakota has a fantastic lead. It's so impressive he decides to celebrate by throwing himself off the stage into the black. What the fudge are you doing? Lancon, with that mistake, is able to get back in the match, and it's now one stock each. Dakota starts racking up some damage. It's looking pretty bad for Lancon, but anything is possible, is what I would say if that strong did not connect. Dakota, after a 10 game hard fought battle with Lancon, becomes your RCS December. 2023 Workshop Champion. I'm sure he SD'd out of his chair to celebrate. 
And there you have it, the end of the tournament for RCS December 2023. Honestly, this was a pretty great event. Bendy's Losers Run was incredible to see. The fact that I'm probably going to be afraid of my school supplies for a good 12 weeks. And take a drink every time Dakota slipped up and still made it part of the plan. So, what's next? I'm sure we're going to get more online workshop tournaments from the community. In terms of major ones though, the next one's supposed to be Genesis X, which, if everything goes as I hear it's about to go, we have a lot to discuss with that one. And then Rivals 2 is supposed to be launching this year, so it's unclear where Workshop's really going to go from here. In my opinion, I would like to see Workshop tournaments run with Rivals 2 at major events. I mean, both games are going to be significantly different, but it's all really going to depend on the community and the people running the event. And with Grinder McGee probably shifting gears to play Rivals 2 so they can be the best, we'll just have to wait and see. Until then, we wait for Genesis X. To everyone going to the event, I hope you have an amazing time. And to those not going, well I guess you're just not going, I don't know, watch at the home or something. Thank you everyone so much for watching, and remember, don't get beat up by German 985 and a VTuber, come on now.